Welcome to Cancelled. We are back at the wonderful Permanent Record Studios here in Austin, Texas. Me and Mr. Beautiful, they call him they in the call comedy me, world. Yeah. Mr. Beautiful. Pat Dean is Kid here. Beautiful. How the hell are you? Kid ya? Beautiful. Yeah, man. I just saw somebody. I don't know who it is. Somebody on my Twitter or Facebook or whatever was saying that their girlfriend is being harassed on Twitter. Instagram because she won't give up her Instagram handle to this rapper and this rapper like uh, oh my god the rapper's name is Lil Waterbed <laughs> Lil Waterbed I bet he fucking sucked dude <laughs> there's no way he's not terrible right he just is, I bet he's a mumble dude <laughs> yeah there's no and way the he's not beats terrible. are fucking great but he just and it's like hell yeah there's no way he's not terrible but apparently he uh Sent all his fans, I guess he has fans, to like harass this girl. little water. Because her, her like Instagram handle is something water. Oh my related. gosh. Yeah, that uh, is hilarious. I'm gonna. As soon as this is done, I'm driving home and I'm listening to Lil Waterbed <laughs> the entire way. And I'm gonna go, this fucking sucks. I'm yeah. gonna laugh. And I'm gonna love it. Dude, I heard that remix to the the Old Town Road with that fucking like Yodely kid or whatever. I okay, so I saw uh, Avery Moore, fan, friend of the podcast, Avery sure. Moore, tweet something about oh this new remix with Mason Ryan or whatever. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I don't know who that is. Is that like a new rapper or something? It's a child. It's, I saw. I googled Yodel, it and yeah. I saw a little child, and then I didn't listen because I don't. Yeah, well, children. Avery is a very funny person, but has notoriously terrible taste in music. <laughs> so it's like I she made me listen to it, and I was like. <sighs> this country's doomed. <laughs> Just because he comes on, he, he, the, the opening line to the, the the Yodel Boys verse is he goes, "Let me tell you something. You can't tell me nothing." It's like, oh, ah, <laughs> <God>, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to listen to a Yodel child. I don't think adults should be allowed to listen to a little. You, you actually you no. should have to be on a list. You should have to like sign up if you like buy that child's album and you're an yeah. adult. You should you have go to be, through a background check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Like, there's something up if you're into the Yodel Kid. Because he's, uh, I don't know, he popped up like a year ago, I think. Yeah, I think it's some sort of like viral thing, Yeah, right? and then he like exploded. Like, people love this kid. It's fine. I mean, Yodel is <laughs> fun, I guess. Who? Okay, here's what's weird. Does anyone who listens to that kid also listen to other yodeling? Like, is that, you know what I mean? Oh, like, are yeah, you a yeah, Yodel yeah. fan and he's very good at yodeling? Huh. I or wonder. do you just like this kid? Man, I bet like the hardcore like yodel heads fucking hate, hate this. Kid. Hate that kid, no kid. question. Yeah, there is there like a backpacker uh, thing of for yodelers where it's like real <laughs> hip hop, but yeah. it's like real yodeling. They, yeah, they're selling yeah, their. Whatever happened to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very that would be so fucking funny yeah, yeah. if that was the case, and I really hope it is. Uh, let's talk about. This terrible television show. Uh, uh, Jack. When last we left, uh, uh, previously on, yes, uh, nothing happened and the show sucks. Uh, previously on, uh, we we are starting here at the end of a part one, part two, where we were led to believe possibly Jane, the photographer, was in a closet that got shot by a shotgun yeah. by these bikers, right? And then, of course, he's not dead. Obviously, yeah. other that I was like really kind of hoping that they we would start this open, and then like he's just dead. And I'm like, that's a fucking nice little twist. Yeah, not the case. Yeah, that's like a Game of Thrones thing. You know, Kolchak just subverts everything you thought about. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's no, exactly what you thought. Although I got mad at that too because like that Korean dude wasn't there. No. So, like, to have that be the reveal, like, because you see, like, legs sticking out, and, oh, he's dead, and then so it's not him, it's the Korean guy. Yeah. But he wasn't there previously. No. So then, what the fuck are we... Yeah, it, it's like a, it's, it's a cheat, and I don't like it. It's very weird. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was kind of a, a strange uh, little episode. Like, I don't know, because those, like, we don't get any... Again, it's like every other we thing. Get we get no resolution. Nothing. <laughs> we learn... It's a two-parter of which we yeah. learn Nothing. <laughs> Two-parter, we learned that Kolchek was born with the wrist, yeah. with the thing on his wrist, which we kind of, I just assumed that he's had the mark. Yeah. And I guess we kind of learned that those bikers are supernatural. I guess. Because, like, like they, you can't shoot them? Yeah, that was kind of, well, there, there was a part in it where, so the bikers are, like, shooting everybody, and then the SWAT the way, guy. Super violent, and I yeah. kind of liked it, because, like, that's, it's so weird when the show pulls the trigger for violence yeah. and action, because, like, 
they just shoot nine thousand. It's like heat. It's like fucking. They kill heat. so oh, many SWAT cops. people yeah, and yeah, cops. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 and like they show up, and the, the the part I like was one of the dudes just had like a machine gun, and it, like he was so casually shooting it, Very he casually. wasn't even looking. He was yeah, just kind of yeah, moving yeah, it around, yeah, like yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. if I just kind of go like this, I'll get everyone eventually. Like, dude, in no hurry yeah, to yeah, murder yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so he, he kills this, like, SWAT guy's, like, shooting him, and then he kills the SWAT guy, and then uh, Kolchak grabs, like, a um, uh, a lamp to throw out the window, so they can see out the window, and for a second, I was like, this motherfucker is going to hit him with a lamp, and it's going to work, <laughs> yeah, and we're yeah, going to go, yeah. well, what the fuck is this about? But luckily, it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, I would have had aneurysm if that happened. Yeah, that would have made me incredibly angry. Um, so it also opens, by the way, it opens with Ed Head, and my first thought, Ed Head, yeah. my very first note is, fuck, I forgot this chick's name is Ed Head, and it made me very angry yeah because uh, at least because uh, i think tony vincenzo at one point goes egghead and you, you mean edhead yeah you know who the fuck i mean who else could he possibly be talking about uh, um but she says in the very beginning of the episode like we have to find kolchak and she says i promise not to say but he's in koreatown well what the fuck you you did why even bring up the promise that you're why making yourself sound like an asshole even yeah it's i thought that was so strange yeah yeah who was that lady that's edhead oh that was edhead that's edhead Oh, right. Yeah. That's Ed Head, the tech guy, or girl. Okay, yeah, girl. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry for a second. I thought that was somebody else. Yeah. No, it's fine. Also, I laughed at one point after the Korean lady's cleaning up the store, and she's, like, sweeping, but she's sweeping blood. It's she, insane. She's using a broom to sweep a puddle of blood. Man, yeah, God. Like, I know you're bad at running a store, apparently. You just you said that last time. But, like, you got to know the difference between a mop and a broom. Yeah, come on, lady. Like, <laughs> get get with it. You traveled so far to come to this country. Like, Korea's <laughs> far, dude. Like, <laughs> they don't have mops in Korea? How do you clean things? <laughs> yeah, just, what the fuck are you talking about? Just, well, America, what a country. Yeah, it doesn't really work too well, though. <laughs> what an inefficient country. It's so dumb. Yeah. Um, also, I got mad at that Korean lady because, like, She's cleaning up. In that moment, she's cleaning up, and this black cop is like, hey, is there anything that I can, like, help you with or whatever? And she kind of reacts like she's scared of him. Yeah. And I guess, like, she's – her friend's been murdered. There's been a bunch of deaths in the store or whatever. But, like, no chance he's your dream guy? If your whole Come thing on. is, like, a dude is going to show up and be nice to you and then maybe yeah. he will fall in love, why couldn't it just be him Come or on. literally any dude that walks into this store, I guess? But, like, felt a little racist that no – no option for it to be the black guy. Yeah, and he's got a steady job. He's got a nice job. He was nice. He's all, he's yeah. like, is there anything I can do for you? He doesn't need to do that. Probably get a pension after uh, 15 yeah, years yeah, or yeah. whatever. Gold I mean, watch come on. or whatever. Granted, he's probably going to hit you. I mean, that's just, I assume, how cops are. Yeah, normally, I think. Violence. Yeah. What could you uh, do? Um, so here's the upshot. They have to find uh, the DEA agent from the last episode's wife because she's still missing, but they, find, they realize she's alive because they've heard her on this phone call, right? Yeah. They find out, they figure out that the bracelet that he left behind is a calendar. Yeah, I didn't really. So basically there's knots, right? And there's a group of three knots, and then a, or a group of two knots, a group of four knots, and a group of three knots. Yeah. And that is so that he'll know. So there's three hotels where she's going to stay, but she can't stay in any one because it'll track her down. So she'll stay at this one for two, for two days, then this one for four days, then this one for three days. And apparently that she, he uses the bracelet to keep track of that. But, like, can't you just keep track of that? I don't understand. I don't understand the mechanics of the yeah. bracelet. We have cell phones with calendars on them. It's incredible. Yeah. Use that. <laughs> like, it saved me so many times because I have a terrible memory. So. Sure. But also, like, I don't – whatever. I don't understand the mechanics, but they figure out that she's going to be at this one hotel because yeah. they trace a phone call. And she used her driver's license or whatever. So they go to this hotel, and that's where the fucking bikers show up. And the FBI, because the FBI has released Carl Kolchak so that they can follow him and use him as bait, right? One funny thing about him is that Carl, like, he's been arrested, like, several times so far. And, like, held, too. Not just, like... Hey, we're gonna like arrest. You. Like, hey, what's your deal? Okay, you can go. Like, they like hold him for like yeah, a night. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, the cops, uh, Fane says to him, "Now get out of here before I change my mind." For what? That's also a thing that happens in all TV shows. Like before I change my mind, yeah, like a cop thing. You don't get to – no. You either can hold me or you can't. Yeah. You can't be letting me go like, yeah, you know what? Never mind. Get back in the jail cell. I they changed my mind. found the guy. Yeah. Like, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you didn't do it. We know you didn't mm-hmm. do it. Yeah, that you were was... in jail while he was murdered. That... We know <laughs> yeah, dude, you didn't do it. You didn't do it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, before I change my mind and violate your constitutional rights and get fired, like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Um, they talk to her. 
She didn't know shit. Yeah. Are we to believe she was also attacked by the thing that killed Kolchak's wife? I don't. I, I don't guess. I don't I kinda, know. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying is that they all have – or whenever that like mark on the wrist is brought up, I feel like – it's not one of those mysteries where you're like, oh, I just don't get what this is. I feel like they're not being obvious enough with what the fuck they're talking about. And not in a way – like you don't have to beat us over the head with it. But at least like if you're going to be subtle, be subtle. We still don't know no, what the deal is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to give us something to work give on. Give us something. Although I got very – this. there was one line that I really enjoyed uh, because it was like a true – like a way a human being would actually respond to somebody. They're um, – they're bringing Kolchak up to speed after she he's been released from the jail about the uh, how they found her wife for whatever, the guy's wife and how the uh, she goes he, you know he told uh, Agent Walton before Agent Walton was killed he told us that uh, something attacked their white uh, their car in a storm and the wife was dragged away he goes sound familiar and Kolchak goes yeah of course it does. <laughs> 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 Kolchak says, "You know it does." What? Like oh. he's he's fucking like pissed about them asking it. Yeah. I, that made me laugh really hard. Yeah, he's yeah stupid. Yeah, yeah that's I know. my wife. You fucking assholes. My like, dead wife. <laughs> my murdered wife. Yeah. Uh, they also do like. Uh, then okay. Also, fuck Edhead by the way, because Edhead calls them when they're in a car and he's like, "I oh, I found the wife. So get back here." Which I don't understand why like, you don't just tell them where she is on the phone or whatever because we're already driving. But fine. They go back to the place and what she's found is that uh, hotel where she stayed like six days ago. And this leads into the conversation with the bracelet or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, so you didn't find her. Yeah. And she goes, huh, well, you know, I didn't say I found – I knew where she was right now, but I did find her. What the, why the fuck did you drag me back here? I don't like anyone on this show. There's so many weird moments like that where you're just like – what like. You didn't, in the writers' room, weren't like this is this makes no sense. We're, we're writing something that makes no sense. Let's try to have it make sense. And like, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just gonna crank this script out. Also, they show so there's a point where they are like we have to track down your source, Kolchak, the guy is calling you. Do you have any Lee, anything, a name, a phone number? And he's like, no, there was just this house. <laughs> that was not a house. No, that place they went to was not a house. No, <laughs> all right, it was some weird building that was just staircases. But fine, we'll call it a house. <laughs> They drive staircase there. manor. They drive there, and it's gone. The building doesn't exist. Yeah, and Kolchak's like, "But I know it does. I was here like twice." Uh, and she's like, "Well, you know, you said you came to this house. There's no house here. You said you got phone calls on this phone. The phone was never activated. Something's going on." And then Jane's like, "Yeah, but we know that homeboy got a call from the guy that we know to be dead." So, and she's like, "Well, maybe he wasn't dead yet." And he's like, "Well, maybe he was." That's it. They never address that shit again. It's a little weird. This missing house, people calling from the other side of the grave, never comes up. No. Why would it? Hey, man, it's, it's, it's Kolchak, baby. <laughs> well, one thing that I think is funny about this show is uh, – what? Uh, actually, I think this was – no, this is the next episode. Sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. No, so, Cole, so then this is the other thing that I found fucking annoying. The uh, FBI shows up after so there's this massive shootout, right? Yeah. All these fucking cops. And also they go three officers were gunned down today. Way more. A than, lot more than way that. Way more than three. There were like. So many more than three. A whole squadron, a whole grip. Yeah, 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 it's like, yeah, dude, yeah. there's like many also, dead that, people. that poor fucking guy who owned the hotel. Nobody gives a fuck about him. <laughs> yeah. He got shot right away. Yeah, he was immediately murdered. <laughs> no one gives a fuck. Uh, what an uncaring world. Yeah. <laughs> this takes place in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so uh, uh, the, the FBI shows up at the newspaper and is like, we need you. Uh, we want you to be able to trace. We want to monitor your phone calls. So if Kolchak calls in, we'll be able to uh, respond right away. And also we want to see the, we want those pictures that you took. Yeah. Um, and Tony Vigeno's like, you will receive no cooperation from this newspaper. Why now? Wait, it's uh, yeah, it's more serious now. Like yeah. what, before, it was like, oh, Kolchak, they, they're trying to find a guy who's very much alive, and maybe you know Kolchak could give up the source or whatever. And they're like, yeah, absolutely, give up your source. Now, like there are supernatural bikers murdering people, all, like willy nilly. Yeah, this is where you place, take a stand. And the newspaper's like, absolutely not. We don't. No, thank you, sir. Yeah, I, I thought that part was so bizarre because, like, they're who would they're clearly going to cave in to the FBI. Like, when he's like, you would like when they leave, it's like, yeah, I think he's right. I don't think my bosses are going to go for yeah, this. No, it's like, no, they're not. The bosses already <laughs> agreed to work with the FBI, so I don't know what stand you're What's taking. Your problem, Tony. Fucking Tony. Uh, 
they, so the next scene we see, so it's daytime when that shootout happens, right? Yeah. Then we see Kolchak and uh, Gabriel Union and the wife of the DEA agent. They've escaped from that shootout, right? Mm-hmm. Climb out the back window, driven away. We see them at a, a motel, and it's clearly night out. It's dark, so time has passed, but assuming several hours. See, they've driven for some distance to yeah. get them to get her to safety. She goes, how did you know I was going to be at that hotel on that day? And it's because they had the bracelet. They haven't told her yet that her husband was murdered. They've been driving for two, three hours, presumably. <laughs> it's dark now. And they just haven't mentioned it. <laughs> And then when they do, she's like, I fucking knew it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, what? You had a hunch that your husband was a, dead, so you didn't ask? <laughs> when they showed up at the hotel, you'd be like, what? look, if you, if you are of the belief that the only person who knows where you are is your fucking husband, yeah. and then two reporters show up, you should be like, where's my husband? Yeah. Nope. Hey, uh, uh, crazy question. My husband, dead? He's, he's alive, right? Yeah. He's not <laughs> brutally murdered by uh, ghost uh, yeah. bikers or whatever? The other the thing that has happened here that we've missed is Kolchak and them go to talk to uh, – they get the bracelet from the Korean lady who owns the store, right? Yeah. They go to question her. She has another translator there, so like her mom or something, I guess, is an older Korean lady. Yeah. And uh, she says that she's going to move – she's like, she doesn't want to own the store anymore. Too much death has happened here. Yeah, clearly. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, also, she's bad at running a store. That's all – this is – She. this is a good excuse for her to get out, right? Yeah. Uh, she's like, I, it's like, where, where, where will you stay or whatever? Where will you go? And she goes, oh, she's just going to come live with me. I have a house up the coast uh, north of here. A house by the sea. By the sea, she says. Weird the way to put it. Very weird way to put it. All right, Charles Dickens, fucking calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I will vacation by the sea. All right. The uh, bikers show – oh, so they, they go to this thing. She goes, yeah, I got no answers for you. Uh, of course not. This is Kolchak. There are no answers anywhere. Nope. She goes, yeah, I don't have any answers for him. Um, my husband thought that this drug dealer had attacked us, so he put me in hiding, and now he was going to go pay off the drug dealer, which is what the first scene of the previous episode was, right? Yeah. Gabriel Union and Kolchak have a little sit down where they're like, you know, if you trust me now, then you know, uh, you should it should go both ways. Like she comes clean that like Fane tried to turn him and say that he killed the wife for money, but he doesn't have any money. He spent all his money on candy bars or some bullshit. Yeah, and uh, he can comes clean to her about the mark on his wrist, and she's like, well, you've always said that the mark only shows up on people after they've died in these strange ways. Is there any? Have you ever heard of anyone else having this mark while they were alive? And she's he's like, no. And that is the only thing we know. But the other thing we know is that the bikers show up. There's a, uh, he tries to run away to lead them away so the, so the other two can escape. And when they, they're about to shoot him, but they see the mark on his wrist and they leave him alone. They leave. They don't kill him. Yeah. I guess that's important. And then that's just kind of it. It's like, that's kind of all it. All right. Well, there's a moment where, like, he never tells, like, Gabriel Union, like, oh, by the way, you want to know what fucking happened? Like, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just, he, he just says, like, oh, I ran away. Yeah, he lies to her, and then they lie together. Okay, so uh, he lies to her that, yeah, I just kept running, and they didn't, yeah. they didn't catch me or whatever. And then he goes, I was just explaining to everyone how the wife gave us the slip at the hotel, and we don't know where she is. Like, he's, like, very obviously saying this. And then she does the most obvious, like, she, he's like, and we have no idea where she is. And he, she stares at him for, like, a 10 beat. He's like, she just <laughs> stares at him for a very long time. And then she goes, no. No, don't know. It's the most obvious <laughs> fucking lie I've ever seen in my life. Well, that's the thing about, like, TV shows is when the character is lying. If they, like – I think a lot of times people think, like, oh, the, our audience is not going to get this, that, that she's lying. She has to kind of give this sort of uh, clue to the viewer that she's lying. And in their defense, they're probably right. I think a lot of people wouldn't get that they were lying. So I kind of get why they do it. But, yeah, it, was it wasn't so obnoxiously long. long. It yeah. was such a long It period. wasn't like her going, like – yeah, that's true. Like yeah, that would yeah, make sense. Yeah, like yeah, for a yeah. second, just going, "What is he?" Oh, yeah, okay. A second, I see. The, yeah. the the catch on to what Kolchak wanting, but not that long of a fucking beat. And then here's what I, also annoys me. She goes, uh, "Hopefully, she's somewhere where no one will ever find her again." Yeah. I'm, why I don't know. Other than the bikers are still out there. Yeah, it kind of sounds like you killed them. <laughs> well, <laughs> hopefully, no one will find it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You, you sound like a but murderer. What they so somehow. So when they went to talk to the Korean lady, he she writes down her address and she's like, "If I can ever help her, yeah. here's my address or whatever." So she goes to live with the Korean lady up north, yeah, in the house by the sea. 
And she's pregnant. Well, I think. And she's pregnant. She turns around. They reveal that she's pregnant. Why does is that a place they won't be able to find her? It appears to be a town. If there's yeah. other houses, yeah. it's like a nice place. It's I don't <laughs> understand. It's just north. It's not even. <laughs> it's not even out of state. Yeah, it's just it's north. California. <laughs> yeah, all it is is north. I don't understand why she's that's such a safe place yeah, for her to really. be from supernatural ghost bikers. They're gonna find you, which we find out by the way that two of the bikers are uh, dead. Yeah. I mean, we know that they can't be shot. Like, they're shot a bunch of times. Nothing happens to them. Because yeah. there's parts where they're the, in the shootout. The cops are like, I'm hitting these guys. And the other cops are like, I'm hitting them too, but nothing's happening. Also, that is never mentioned again. The FBI does not seem to care that these bikers are impervious to bullets. Well, that's what's so weird is that, like, there's several times in this series, like, with with those weird, like, creepy dogs at the beginning where, like, people blatantly see these things happening. Yeah, yeah. And no one seems to be that rattled. No one seems to care that there are ghost bikers with machine guns. Yeah. Well, I don't understand how they're ghosts but also carry guns. <laughs> now, also, are, are, are they? do they never have to reload those guns because the guns are also supernatural? That's what I think. There's a lot of just shooting that they yeah. never re- – like, Endless bullets. Endless bullets, right? We're talking thousands of rounds. Yeah. Um, so I guess they're supernatural guns as well. I have to imagine weird. that, yeah, that, that, that they're magical guns or something. But, but Jane finds out that because uh, he got their picture – at the shootout, and he looks at the he like compares those to some files. Turns out there are these two ex cons who uh, were killed in a bank robbery like two years ago or whatever. Yeah. So the bikers are dead. The FBI shows up at that point. One line from the FBI, like all it takes is one like for Jane to be like, "Hey, uh, anybody want to talk about why you shot these guys a thousand times and nothing happened?" And they could just be like, oh, you know, body armor or whatever. Because the FBI is not going to be like, oh, they're ghosts. Right. But like, have the FBI go, yeah, I mean, they must have uh, must have been wearing body armor. But it went through them. It went through them and shot other – yeah, it, it's fucking They make crazy. a point to I'll show you yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. where he was standing, the door behind him is just riddled with Bullet bullets. Hole. So it's right. like, I mean – yeah, it's fucking dumb. Yeah. Almost as dumb as the next episode of Night Stalker. So, because motherfuck this episode's stupid. Yeah, this one's really dumb. So, th- what I was going to say earlier is that <laughs> there's so many times. To- okay, there is so many times that Gabriel Perry will be like, Are you sure about that? Yeah, 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 it's yeah, like, yeah, dude, yeah. C- come on. Like, all your life has been for the past two months is nonstop insanity with this guy, and this is what you're going to go like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, you've witnessed this. Yeah. You have seen Ghost Bikers. Ghost Bikers! <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't understand. Um, this episode, anno- well, first off, clearly aired or out of order here, right? Yeah. Because the relationship dynamic between Perry and Carl Kolchak is back to the beginning. Yeah, right? it's like a sitcom where uh, even though there are there is character growth, it, it, it does reset every single time. So even if it's like, oh, now we're friends, the next episode's like, oh, we're enemies now. And it's like, oh, right. But I don't know if it's supposed to be that this followed the previous episode because it, it very much feels like they have been like growing closer. Yeah. And then this episode, they're just at each other's throat. Yep. She doesn't believe him. But then at one point, she says later on that she's like, you know, the last time you, uh, you said you had a source, it turned out to be you. And I'm like, who? When was that? I don't even remember that. Yeah. Uh, I did like the beginning where uh, that a lady, I don't know what her job is. I don't want to call her a secretary, but she's like rewritten this business to, I don't know, something about actuaries. I don't know. No, it's business jargon, yeah. right? And uh, he hears – and she's trying to fuck. She's quite clearly yeah. trying to fuck, right? Hark. She's like, yeah, you want to get a drink or whatever? And he's like, oh, I got to write this cover letter. But then there's a noise that he goes to investigate. And he comes back and he's like, oh, Brenda's gone. And then he turns around. And Brenda's there, but she's all fucked up. Yeah. Brenda's like well, half a mummy. And I was like, that's fucking weird and cool. Yep. I like that. Let's that's see where this is going. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he screams again. And then the next day their bodies are discovered, but they are – uh, desiccated. They are like sh- mummified, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Maybe there's like a succubus. Yeah. Or there's some sort of weird uh, vampire that drains you of stuff. Nope. Nope. No, it's a disgruntled it's a security guard with a weird gel on his hand <laughs> that also, does the gel come out of him? I No, he got it from his old, from his old job. But how does that, what, okay. I have so many questions. Yeah, there's a lot. It, of- because, and the reason I have so many questions is, this show has no answers. They no. don't reveal anything. He, They don't win ever. Dude, there was, I swear, I was watching this this morning. 
Uh, uh, I was going to watch it last night, but uh, I guess the evening We were had a- both going to watch it. We, yeah, our we were plan- having a, a fun time at the old <laughs> Velveeta Room in Austin, Texas. Uh, knocking uh, back a few, uh, few old yeah. sodas, and uh, I came up. I was like, oh, you're going home to watch the episodes. I'll come. We'll record us watching the episodes. That could be fun. Yeah. And then I realized that I had had probably too many old sodas, and I Irish could bide yeah. super fast. Well, I was going to do that, and on the, on the way home, uh, I stopped for a nightcap at the wheel, and then uh, about halfway through it, I was like, there's no way I'm going to watch this yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, just, yeah. you know what I watch instead? I watch fucking that old, uh, uh, did you ever watch that that Red Letter Media? Th- I think it's called Red Letter Media or something, where it's like uh, this guy is doing a review of The Phantom Menace. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'll, I'll tell you after after okay. the fact. It is so fucking funny. I'll, okay. I'll, it's just yeah. got, yeah, it's this whole weird thing. I'll take it to it. But uh, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, I woke up today to so watch they did, it. So they did not win, is where this started. I yeah, think we got so, they, so, so they don't win. And as I was watching this morning, I was like, Chris is going to be so mad at this. <laughs> like when the guy just jumps, he you're just I'm like, gets away. All right. Uh, okay. Anyway, so uh, these two people have been found uh, dried out, they're all mummified, right? And then uh, another person is attacked. Uh, he only attacks people in office buildings, which is like yeah, a weird. weird. And also, what's weird is Carl Check says at one point, like, like normally, like they they talk, like, how do I say it? So they like if if there's a cop show or something, right? And the victim is like a uh, a little kid or uh, you know a homeless person or something that's like this guy's attacking the vulnerable and the you know we have to we should be more offended by the choice of victim because they're so vulnerable. Yeah. Here, he cold check says, like, these people died alone in an empty office building. <laughs> and? Like, yeah, I don't understand. Why the fuck that men are fucking business asses? I don't yeah. give a shit. Like, also, the, those first two people died together. Yeah, they were, like, they embracing were, each they other. They were hugging the whole yeah, yeah, for sure. At least they had each other. Um, <laughs> so they find another guy. He's dried out, too. Kolchak and her, I was, this made me so mad at fucking idiot Kolchak. He's such a fucking idiot. They go break into this fucking office building to, to inspect the crime scene, oh, yeah, right? They just contaminate the crime They're scene. They're completely contaminating another <laughs> crime scene. She at least is like, hey, we shouldn't do this. And he's like, that's yeah, fine. It's fine. They go in. Now, the prevailing theory, Kolchak is working on the theory that I don't know what. Somebody killed these people yeah. and drained them of their water or whatever. Yeah. We haven't gotten to what the actual thing is. She is working on the police's theory, which is they've been exposed to some sort of toxin, right? Some unknown toxin. They go into this place, no masks. They don't put on a fucking painter's thing and nothing. Yeah. Uh, you see Chinese people on the bus with more fucking, like, <laughs> breathing apparatuses than you do these idiots. <laughs> Kolchak looks down and there's some sort of gel on the carpet, and he's like, oh, it looks like some kind of gel. Immediately wipes his fucking fingers through it. What the fuck are you doing? And he immediately starts bleeding. Yeah, he's like, like, yeah, you fucking fucking earned earned that, Kolchak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, nothing. Yeah. His finger's fine. He's got a Band-Aid on it. Yeah. Shouldn't his Okay, so what we find out, kind of... Is so that they, there's very bizarre cameo? I don't even understand. Yeah, of uh, uh, Jane Jane Lynch. Uh, Jane Lynch for no reason. It's so weird because she's not. Well, I, I mean, I'm assuming there was a point where she was just trying to be an actress. This is 2007. Yeah. Like she's taking roles where she can get them, right? But she. So Kolchak has a source. They go to the corner again, right? Yeah. And it's the guy who she is so shitty to. For no reason, it pisses <laughs> me off, right? Yeah, I kind of like the, this. Guy. Then the show writes him. There's no reason for the show to write him to also be a dickhead, but like <laughs> he reveals, like he, yeah, Cole, he should, you know, he gives Colchek a sample of the gel because yeah. they scraped it off their neck. He gets to see the dead bodies or whatever, and then he goes, "I oh, aren't you forgetting something?" And he goes, "Oh right, here you go." And she's like, "Oh what, more Laker tickets?" And he's like, "No, uh, ballet actually, Bolshoi." And she's like, oh, "I've been trying to get those tickets. You like the bel- you like ballet?" And he's like, "Actually, I don't." And he's trying to, he's just trying yeah. to use the tickets to get a date with her. She leaves. Why couldn't he just fucking like the ballet? Wouldn't that be a more interesting character than yeah. horny coroner guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To just be like, oh, I'm a guy who, well, yeah, I, I like the I like the Lakers and I like ballet. Sure, I, I contain multitude. Well rounded. Yeah, I will say, fuck ballet. I'm so sick of ballet. Wait, like, wait, wait, hold on. How are you sick of ballet? Because it's are like, you, but have you ever been exposed to it in any way? I've I've heard of it. Okay. My point is that <laughs> ever, it's always like ballet. It's like it just. It's always sucks. the thing. Also, I'm sure it's. Something. It's, I'm I, so, dancing fucking sucks. <laughs> I just, I mean, fucking, that's what you're gonna do with your time on this planet? You're gonna dance around like a jackass? Uh, Fuck you. 
Uh, here's what I will say about ballet being dumb. And also, it's, I don't know, probably pretty hard. And I, I'm sure there's a thing that's cool about I it. I would never be able to do it. Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, Pat. I mean, yeah. We both know that about both of them. Maybe we should take ballet. <laughs> I don't know that I have the body type. Well, I mean, no, football a, players t- uh, take ballet. It helps them with their uh, agility footwork. Agility or yeah. whatever. Yeah, I get you. I don't, I don't have a football player's body either. I've, I'm fat. Yeah. Like, I don't have – I'm not athletic. What do you th- Football players have to be fast for, like, five seconds. Yeah, and strong. Yeah. And in shape. Pat, yeah. you can't play football. Well, you're maybe, not fast. I'm thinking for, maybe I will. Maybe gonna, I'm going to – You're going to football and, and ballet. ballet. I'm doing both. Okay. And I'm taking you with me. Here's what's annoyed about ballet to me – is I don't know when that became the height of culture for yeah. television and movies, where it's always somebody. It's always like, oh, the ballet. I expected you to be a lowbrow, whatever, but you actually like a smart thing. No one likes the fucking ballet. No one does. No one does. Also, it, 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 there's a reason why, like, you can't name a ballet dancer. No, no one can. It, it also, it's it's like, yeah, you want to look at it as this like this this highbrow culture, but like. Ballet is basically like people fucking with their clothes on. Like 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 like, like when when they have like a dance partner or whatever. Yeah. It's like the most like it's intensely sensuous the whole mm-hmm. time and you're just like, "Well, this is huh? I don't know. It's like it's like the first time you see like real ballet and people are like again, basically fucking with their clothes on. You're just like, "This is weird." It is. Are you guys okay with this? Like what we're watching? Like this you is You brought hot. children here. You got children here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you're keeping track so far this podcast, we are against snakes, they're bullshit, and yeah. ballet. Ballet. They're both and if, bullshit. And if I ever see a snake doing ballet, I'm going to fucking kill myself. <laughs> so another woman, he, he killed – all right. So they're working on the, – the police are like not admitting that this is a, there's a killer out there. They're saying that there's a, there's a – these buildings have been illegally using pesticide. Yeah. And that is somehow drying people out. Sure. Um, we find out. That um okay so a dude yeah it's just a dude it's not a supernatural dude yeah, it's, just, it's some some guy named Steve it's like a security guard the guy he's a fucking security guard <laughs> yeah. he works as he's a security guard he somehow has a gel on his hand that dries that removes the liquid from a thing yeah how then does he does absorb he that liquid um. He, Is that ever explained? No, I, I think that. Oh, I. Well, that's the thing. It's never explained. So I have to come up with a solution. God. And my thing is that, like, <clears throat> he was probably wearing gloves. I guess. I, mean, I don't know. But I. But but like also. No, like, he's not wearing gloves. You don't see him we with see gloves him in the last one, at right? the last episode when he goes to choke. Col- or the, last, the end of the episode when he goes to car- choke uh, Kolchak. He's just got a greasy ass hand. His hands just covered in that gel. Yeah, my thing is that like whenever like you can leave things up to interpretation about like a character or something like that. So like if you have. My thing is that if you have questions after a TV show uh, that aren't related to like, oh, I wonder what that guy was thinking, or like, or or because sometimes you know people not in this show, he will create you know complex characters where sure. you go, know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, it's yeah. this, maybe it's that. But yeah, like, you can debate his motivation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But if you if you're asking yourself questions about like the technical aspects, it's right, like you've, of the you story. failed as a storyteller. Yeah, yeah. Like absolutely. you you have to. I don't know what happened in this show. One throwaway line would have would have explained it well. How did he do that? Well, he has some sort of condition that, or blah, 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 blah. Just, some, just something. lie to me. Lie, Bull, you, make it, something up. You are making up the whole thing. You, you can make you up do for whatever a you want. You invent shit for me to watch. Yes. And I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. He, uh, so he's going, this man who worked at a, who is a security guard, has this gel that allows him to absorb, that uh, sucks water out of people. Yeah. And then somehow he absorbs that water. I don't know. They never yeah, show us how. Another thing is that, like... That's my concern. My my question is, okay, he's got... So what we find out, kind of, is he worked at some chemical plant yeah. and says that he was exposed to something for six months because of a leak, and now he's a, a some sort of water monster. <laughs> I don't... They don't explain it. I, they don't explain... I also like to know... <laughs> Was he the only one who worked at this plant? Why aren't there you know, a bunch of water monsters? A whole around, army of right? them. That because would be tight. Theoretically, well. he didn't work in that plant by himself. Was the leak just above his desk? Oh. Like I don't understand <laughs> why it's just him. Yeah. What if like a, the way it ended was they see him escape and they're like, well, that's you know that they turn around. There's like thirty of them. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. 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 
So he is going around absorbing water from people. He attacks one guy, but that guy survives. And we find out it's because he's an alcoholic. Shout out to alcoholism. Hell yeah. And uh, It always saves you. It, it's the best. And he, uh, we find out that he survived because he was an alcoholic. And this guy needs nutrients. It's why he's not. They also go, that's why he's not attacking like homeless people. He only attacks like businessmen healthy because people. they're healthy or whatever. And he needs to stay. Um, what businessman is healthy, by the way? Those guys are all like – They've scotch in their desk. Yeah, and just stressed out scotch lunatic. and stress and yeah, infidelity yeah, yeah. and all kinds of just like nonsense. I still don't understand why – if it, may, it may, that gel makes everyone else uh, dry up. Yeah. At one point, they go to Jane Lynch and she's a scientist. Oh, a weird interaction with Jane Lynch, by the way. Very odd. Because they go to her because she's helped Perry in the past, right? Yeah. And uh, she's like, hey, we're hoping you could run a test on this sample or whatever. And uh, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, how did you get the sample? And Kolchak's like, oh, we can't reveal our sources. And Jane Lynch is like, well, then I'm not fucking helping you. It's like yeah, throws a job. So it's such a weird – I thought you were friends. This is yeah. a very aggressive fucking attitude here. Uh, it's just – it was weirdly written. It just yeah. didn't make any sense. Yeah, that part was very odd, uh, the, how confrontational she was. When yeah. It was just like, we're trying to solve some murders, and it's like, well, fuck you. <laughs> like, All right, well, sorry, Jane. But she does, uh, she, and sh- she sends them pictures because she puts some of it on a rat, and it sucks out all the She sends them a picture of the, like, modified yeah. rat. I thought that was kind of cool. It's, it's fucking cool and gross. So why does it make Kolchak's finger bleed? Yeah, it doesn't. It, ha- it doesn't have the effect that it has on anything else. Told, it talks cold check. He goes, ah, it burns, and then his finger bleeds. Yeah. That's it. Also, like, Jane Lynch's character, I don't remember what, what the character's name was, but, like, she, like, seems weirdly, like, nonchalant about it. She's like, yeah, we just, like, murdered this rat. Yeah. Oh, this, <laughs> this, like, gel that I was handling? Yeah, it's, like, super deadly. Thanks for giving me this super deadly, <laughs> yeah, exposing yeah. me to this. She's just like, yeah, so the rat, like, completely died, so that's, that's kind of cool. All right, well, good luck with your police work. Well, it feels like that's what science used to be. Was just like, <laughs> what do you mean? I feel like there's a point in it. Like she's that. I feel like that's how old, how like an old timey scientist would res- like science. At some point in our history, in human history, was just like hitting a mouse with a hammer and just be like, I oh, wonder what that'll do. Like that's yeah. just what science was. So like she's reacting like that. She's just like, yeah, we put a bunch of gel on his rat and it sucked it dry. Pretty cool, I guess. Like <laughs> yeah, she's like pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, but there's not like she's hitting like. Take that. She didn't go, oh, by the way, here's the chemical makeup of that compound. Yep. But she didn't put it under a micrometer or something or a microscope or a, uh, whatever. She just immediately was like, oh, I wonder if I smear it on this rat. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, dude, if I was that, uh, that uh, doctor, I would have called him and been like, do you know what fucking happened to <laughs> yeah, me? Yeah, 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 yeah. We murdered this rat. Like, I would be freaking out. Like, this fucking rules or like something. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit about anything. So they go, uh, they've. Take picture. They've got all these pictures from all the crime scenes, right? And they realize that the same security guard is at all the pictures, yeah. in all the pictures. So they go to the, secu- the the company he works for, and they like trick the guy into giving up his like the dude's address because they're coming like. So we're gonna run a story on your firm hang- hiring uh, convicts to protect people or whatever. And yeah. and his we know his name is Tony Vincenzo, but if you can tell us that it's not. Uh, his name, then we can uh, we won't run the story. And then the next scene is them leaving with his file, and it's like, well, the guy would have. The guy's like, I can't tell you shit, right? <laughs> he gives them his everything. The whole, he gives them <laughs> the folder, like he took with it out of the address. drawer. He didn't even give them copies. <laughs> they, he clearly handed him the file that came out of the filing cabinet. You, you know what I'm saying? You could have just been like. Okay, I looked it up. That's not nah, his. Never his had any guy named Tony. Tony Vincenzo. Vincenzo has never worked here. No, get the fuck out of my office. And no, instead they give him his actual personnel file. Yep. Uh, so they go back to his house, or which is like a weird dilapidated, dilapidated kind of, kind of yeah. like warehouse space or whatever. Hmm. And she goes, "Tell me you're not going to break that lock." And he goes, "No." And he breaks a window. Right, it's above the door. Check. You're going to look at that window. It's about eight inches by eight inches square. Yeah, it's whittled. It's very small. And then the net, so I'm like, oh, theoretically, what you're going to do is break the window to reach in and open the lock or something, but it's too high to reach the doorknob. The next scene is him like having climbed through the broken window, except he can't. It's an eight by eight inch square. They don't even have the decency to show. You can see that it's not the same window he just broke. <laughs> it, it's full of glass. <laughs> he is standing in front of an unbroken window at that point. <laughs> this fucking show sucks. Yeah. 
Uh, they walk in. He's got a bunch of fake driver's licenses because he moves around a lot because he's killing people. He can't stay in one place too long. Yeah, and a bunch of mummies. A bunch of mummies laying around. So he's like, oh, we found our guy. The guy comes back early, surprises him or whatever, yeah. chases him around a little bit. Or this cold check chase him. I kind of chased- walked out of the room for a second because I was like, eh, I don't give a I think it's kind of like that old cartoon thing where it's like one guy's chasing the other, then off screen, then suddenly the they other come guy's back chasing, chasing the him. other. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. What I think they just did been. a full on Scooby Doo where they just start <laughs> popping out of weird doors and yeah. shit. Um, so, yeah, they chase him down a little bit. He gets his hands on Kolchak's neck, which is how he kills people, by the way. Yeah. There's also a thing at the uh, morgue where the guy says, like, uh, we have abrasions like he was strangled, but there's no uh, blo- like internal bruising yeah. or whatever that there would be in a strangulation. Uh, so you're saying he was strangled, but, but not strangled. But not strangled. And he's like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? How come <laughs> fuck any you show? How come people talk like that to each other? No show? one talks right. At one point, she's. I think it was in the previous episode, but he says uh, she says something to him about like, um, you know, I know you thought you were going to get your answers or whatever, and he says like. I wrote it down. He says, like, uh, hopes raised and then dashed are cruel indeed. Are you a pirate? Yeah, what, what the fuck? No one talks like this. Who are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you live in you... Los Angeles. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> this is not how humans speak. Anyway. <laughs> so he gets his hands on Kolchak, but then the cops show up before he can fully kill Kolchak. So he jumps over the side of the bridge, lands in a very conveniently passing truck, yep. uh, the back of a truck, and drives away. Our hero, our villain, escapes to go on and kill again. But they catch him at the end, right? No, they don't. So what I was expecting were they were going to come around the back of that truck, right? Because what we see is the cops, they, we go back to the office, and they're like, hey, we found out this guy worked at this chemical plant or whatever. Not, some bullshit non-answer, right? Then we see the cops pulling over the truck that the guy jumped into the back of. But he's not in the back of the truck anymore. Yeah. So he's escaped. Now, I was expecting oh, okay, yeah. they were going to find, like, his desiccated. If the idea is he has – what they say is he has to – because he was exposed to some chemical, he has to absorb water from other people's uh, bodies to stay alive. How about right? you just sue and get well, he seven did sue. billion well, he, dollars? He sued, and they said uh, – of course – he says, like, uh, of course they found no uh, merit to his claim. The fuck are you talking about? He's he's, he's a he's a, a a sponge monster now. Yeah. You, you, he can, he can absorb much moisture. <laughs> yeah, and has to to live or he'll die. Yeah, there's clearly a case. There's such a case there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's fine. He's the, the you, you know our justice system. Yeah. Uh, so I so what we shouldn't there then be they come around the body and find his dried out husk because he hasn't been able to feed. That would be at least be a fucking yeah. summation of this show. Huh. No, he's just gone. He's just escaped. He's out okay. there sucking people dry again. Yeah. So our heroes have learned nothing and achieved nothing. Once again, the bad guy wins, and Kolchak's a dick. Yeah. <laughs> he's fucking don't get this show. Yeah, he's just kind of a jerk. He's all a such, fucking jerk. They're all such jerks. But uh, every one of that show is a jerk. And like, then the, oh, uh, they also go, oh, we found this, by the way. One of the... Uh, because uh, they found all those mummies at his place or whatever, uh, one of them had the mark on his wrist as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that uh, means nothing because we know nothing about it and fuck that mark. Yeah. But everyone on the show is kind of skeezy. Like, Kolchak is clearly skeezy. Yeah. Uh, like, there's people, like, constantly trying to have sex with Gabrielle Union's character. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. that guy who's like, the, I'll give you the info the, if you uh, get a drink, drink with me. me. Yeah, yeah. Like, also, by the way, did that drink happen like at 8 a.m.? Well, because it is bright and early. She is reporting to work. So, having, and she says, hey, I just fucking got all this information. So when did that drink happen? So what I think it was is that, because I kind of thought that at the same time, I was like, did they already go on a date? But I think what it was is that she he got gave the information first. Because well, later man. on, like... She he interrupts the date that she's on, right? Because she shows up in like an evening dress or something. That I, was very weird. Why why yeah. she was dressed that way? Well, I think I think she was on the date with the oh, guy. Oh, I missed that I part. Think. Okay, I believe. But you. I could also be wrong. I thought for a second maybe that she uh, actually ended up going out with that more guy, and I was uh, like, this could be a fun reveal at the end of the season. That yeah, this whole yeah, yeah. time they they've just... been 
fucking. Yeah. You know what I mean? This whole time. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would have rolled. In the morgue. In the uh, morgue. Oh, um, man. Uh, yeah, it turns out she's a wild, she's a, just a creep. She's just like, <laughs> she just has to fuck around dead bodies. Oh, no. That's the reveal. Yeah, she just had the most traumatic <laughs> childhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now she fucks next to dead bodies. <laughs> like, uh, where did this come from? Yeah, the weird curve. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that I actually did kind of enjoy in this episode is certain characters felt like they were being written to express how the audience would clearly feel about how dumb all of this is. Yeah. Because they kept having people go like uh, – so they find out that he doesn't have um, – the, the, the one guy survived because he's an alcoholic. And the reason he survived is his body is missing – is low on magnesium. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, he needs electrolytes, right? So he doesn't banana it, bread, right? He doesn't have he doesn't have electrolytes in his body. That's why this guy won't, didn't finish drinking them or whatever. And uh, Perry's just like, well, then why didn't she? He just go drink a bunch of Gatorade. What are you talking about? Like she, he, she literally like said she says sports drink instead of Gatorade because it fucking copyrighted or yeah. whatever. But she literally says it as I was saying it out loud to my television. There are moments like that where they go to the sto- they go to present the story. They're such terrible reporters. They go to Tony because Tony at one point goes, "You got two hours. I can hold the front page two hours. Get me the." Story or whatever, yeah. right? So they come back having gotten no facts, just a wild ass theory. <laughs> they have not discovered any of this shit yet, yeah, right? None. They haven't discovered who this guy is, where he lives. They haven't discovered any of that shit. They just have this come up with this theory that this, there's some guy out there drinking people, and they bring that story to Tony Vincenzo, and Tony's just like, "You got nothing. Like, there's no, there's no facts. I can't print any of this." Yeah. And Kolchak's like, "Oh, come on. Well, of course you can't, dude. Like, you haven't." You just made up a bunch of shit and then wrote it down and brought it to him. Like, there's just nothing here. (laughs) It really annoyed me. Yeah, it is. They are stunningly inept at their jobs. They are very bad. At both the actual reporting and, like, their investigations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. I feel like there was one other thing I missed in this episode that really made me angry. There was, I mean, everything. Most things, yeah. I mean, there isn't a... Yeah, I don't... I we don't I don't like these characters and it is not it's one because they're wholly inept at everything and that's not a a, a trait in a character that you want to connect to yeah. and and it's not even like it's not Michael Scott from The Office, right? Who's an inept idiot with a fucking heart of gold. Yeah. You learn to love that he is actually a very good person he and means the best. He's just a fucking dumb, idiot, yeah. right? These people are idiots and assholes. There's nothing good about them. So when they are bad at their job, there's no connection there to the point where, like, I don't understand why she is so mad at him. Like, they go to sneak in to, like, check out the place or whatever, check out the uh, office. And she's like, I can't believe we're sneaking in here. Aren't you also a reporter? Don't you you also sneak in the stuff? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, it just I don't know who wrote this. And then this also <laughs> this also feels like it's out of order because there are shots that happen in this episode that are clearly like we haven't figured out the sort of look of what this show is going to be yet. Yeah. So they kind of happened early in the run and now they're suddenly back like uh when he's walking up to the crime scene, it looks like it's shot through like a like a documentary camera it looks like news footage yeah and then when he gets there it's back to like regular tv looking footage they did that early on they're doing it again and also when they go to the office there's a lot of like guy with a ruler on a thing or somebody like flipping through a binder like newspaper 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 yeah and then that's just just gone by the way yeah nobody's working in that office ever i wonder what it's like there like to work there because it seems like Vincenzo is just constantly being bothered by these two. Like, but there's it's it's a newspaper. There's all kinds of stuff happening. Like, I wonder. Like, I don't think anyone else writes at that newspaper. I think it's just them. It's yeah. just them. With the sports column is just like, uh, yeah, it's a bunch of werewolves playing basketball. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this paper? Like, they think everything is supernatural. Or oh, that's very funny. Um, so we have two episodes left. Yes. Or do you think? I feel like the two episodes, the two-parter we just watched was should have been, like, probably was intended to be the finale, and now we're just going to get two random-ass episodes probably. that don't mean anything, yeah. which is, like, a fucking bummer. Yeah. Um, any predictions? Well, no, because we know when it's going to end. I was going to say any predictions, but, like, what? here's what's annoying. In the previous cold check... There was like a vampire. Then there was a mummy. Then there was a Aztec whatever guy. Yeah. It was an evil computer. This show so far, we have gotten well. There's ghost bikers, right? But then everything else is just like 
a weird dog. Just that, kind of creepy people. Yeah. Yeah, or like this guy who's just like a – just a victim. Yeah. I mean it sucks that he has to – like he's killing people, but like he doesn't have a choice and he's a victim too from this company that fucked him over, right? Uh, we had the, the, the tech – the FBI agent who wasn't really – the. If I remember correctly, right, there was a guy. He was burning people alive. Yeah. Then the FBI agent came back as like a copycat because he went crazy from having to work the guy burning people alive case or whatever, right? Yeah. Another guy who was kind of the victim, right? Yeah. Another guy who was like was doing the right thing and it yeah, drove him then, mad. Yeah. So like who – the villains aren't even villains, but they also always win. Like I don't <laughs> – <this guy's laughs> Anyway, you got anything you want to plug? This will be out on Thursday. <laughs> um – yeah, just follow me on Twitter at Pat Dean. I, I write about uh, gigs and stuff that I do on there. That's probably the best way to do that. To for do sure. it. I'm at Chris Cubis on all social media. Uh, the Sting is coming up first Wednesday of the month, so check that out. Always at King B. Also, this show is produced by producer extraordinaire Mike Moody at Permanent Record Studios. Yes. If you have a podcast, you should record it here. It's fucking very good. Yeah, it's like a professional, nice run space. It's not you're not recording in your closet, which I'm assuming most of you are. Oh God, it's, um, it's so much better than the space I record in, which is just my living room. Your apartment, Cuck Nation Studios, we call it. <laughs> That's a bummer, man. You yeah. can che- you don't have to call it that. Well, you know, I. I what can you do? <laughs> I, well, you can do is rate, review, subscribe, cancel pod on Twitter, follow us on there. By the way, I think the next show will be John from Cincinnati. Yeah, you were saying that before. So uh, check that out. I wanted to seem like, all right, I know people ha- are like, pe- uh, I don't know what I'm looking for here. People are mixed on it, right? But it is at least, it was on HBO, so I assume it will be a competently made television It'll probably show. look good, yeah. It'll look good. There will be decent writing and acting, and it won't be uh, a pile of shit like Night Stalker is. So I'm hoping it gets me through. Uh, so yeah, John from Cincinnati up next. Thank you guys, and uh, we'll be back next week. Bye.